All right, what's up YouTube? So I'm gonna walk you through doing some basic maintenance on a water softener system. And um, you can actually get some of these serviced through a technician if you want. What I'm gonna show you is a little bit more low level basic stuff that you should be able to do yourself. Now there's a couple things I'm gonna show you. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to take the sediment out of your brine well. Um, what sediment? That sediment. Basically, uh, the way it works is your salt, this here, being a mineral, uh, it's mostly salt, but um, there's also dirt in here. You're gonna find in there dirt, contaminants, other things. And what happens over time is you're adding salt to the brine well, and your water softener is dissolving that salt and it's using it uh, to clean the resin beads in here. Uh, and what stays behind is, are small amounts of sediment. And over time, that sediment will start to accumulate in there. It starts to look like sludge. Uh, sediment necessarily won't be absolutely terrible. Like if you have sediment like this, in your system, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but that's a good idea to clean that out and get rid of it so that it doesn't clog up your system. Now, in the back of your softener up here in the back of the head, there's a valve that's called the Venturi valve. I don't know why it's called that. I think it was designed by these three older guys that designed it at the beginning of time. And Dakota Fanning is their assistant. And, and if you don't listen to what they say, she can use her brain to make you hurt. And, and anyways, I'm getting off subject here. The Venturi valve uh, has a mesh net inside of there. And what will happen is that sediment cannot go through that mesh net. And if you leave the sediment in there, it's gonna eventually start to clog up that, that mesh or that net. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean out the brine tank. We're gonna clean out the Venturi valve. And then we are going to add a cleaner. This is a softener cleaner. And I picked it up at Home Depot, it's like eight bucks. And uh, we're gonna dissolve some of this, put it into the brine well. And uh, we're going to run that through the system and that's going to clean out some of the accumulation that might be inside the resin beads. So let's go ahead and get started. Wait, wait, wait. Before we get started, a couple things you're going to need. Um, you are going to need a shop vac and uh, I don't mean like a little bitty baby one. I mean a big manly one like this here. Uh, you're going to need that to clean out the water and uh, as much as the residue or the, as much of the sediment you can out of here. Then you're going to need a shovel and that's going to be to take out the remaining sediment that your shop vac can't get to. Uh, you're going to need a couple of bags of salt because once you finish cleaning out the sediment, you're basically cleaning out any salt that's there. This tank's going to be completely empty, so we're going to go ahead and load up some more salt in there. You're going to need a bucket so that we can add water back into the well and also to dilute the uh, cleaner that we're going to put in there. So here's a look inside the brine well, and as you can see, normally when you look in there, the bottom there is full of salt, and the salt is usually white because salt is white. Um, but down here you can kind of see it looks kind of mucky and dark. Um, that sediment is actually dark gray, kind of blackish in color. I've actually been stirring it and running a cycle uh, for a couple of nights here to try to eliminate as much of the salt I can. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and hit that with the wet vac. We'll take the water out and then I'll show you what the sediment looks like. All right, time for a public service announcement. Before you use a wet vac, there's a filter in here. This is a paper filter. You don't want to ever vacuum water into a paper filter because if that water starts to rise, it'll actually damage your filter out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the paper filter and we're going to put it back in. Again, we're just, it's just when we do water. When you go to vacuum out the wife's car, make sure you put it back in or you'll be blowing dust out all over the neighborhood. All right, now that I got some of the water out, I want you to take a look at that. So that's actually a mixture of salt and sediment. And what happens is you add bag after bag after bag, um, and then you might notice that your water softener, uh, it's not softening, like maybe your water starts to get sticky, you can feel the minerals in your water. You come out and you look in your brine well, but you see stuff at the bottom of it, and you're like, what the F? Like, why is there still, there's stuff down there, but it's not, working when I run the cycle. And it's because it's got sediment in it. And so it'll actually create a layer of sediment where all of the salt at the bottom won't ever get used up. Uh, it can also happen if you add a lot of salt and you don't let the salt go all the way down between each addition. It starts to kind of build up an area at the bottom. It might actually eventually lead to bridging. So you don't want to let your, you want to let the salt run low between the time you add some. You don't want to just add it just because. All right, to just kind of put it in perspective, we're gonna do the Pepsi challenge with salt. This is the salt that I add month after month. Um, this is it from the fresh bag I just got. 
And uh, this is a sediment that lives at the bottom of our water softener. And uh, if you're like me, we just add salt month after month. I mean, there, there's some salt rocks in here. I can find them. Uh, but there's so much sediment in here that it's not dissolving properly. So this is what we're removing from the bottom of the brine tank. And then we're going to clean it out and we're going to replace it with these guys here. Okay, so after a certain point, your vacuum is not going to pull any more of the sediment out. Some of it might be kind of hard, like this. Um, be careful not to break or put a hole in your well. You'll be in trouble. But what I'm going to have to do now is uh, I'm going to have to break up some of the sediment with my shovel. And if my shop vac can't get this out, I'm going to have to go ahead and just use my shovel to get it out. Now earlier I talked about bridging and that's when uh, it kind of forms a hard area and right here is some bridging back here that's happening behind this guy. So I'm going to have to get in there as well. And then once I get this all cleaned out, I'm actually going to take my water hose and I'm going to hose out in here. But for now, let me go ahead and get all this uh, leftover sediment out. Okay, so I've made some progress here. I was able to use the shovel and the bucket that I was using to take out a lot of this sediment. There's still some in there. I've actually broken it all loose now. So the next step is I'm going to take a water hose and I'm going to rinse out the inside of my container here. And then with the water in the bottom, it'll actually allow me to vacuum out that remaining sediment. So let's go ahead and get that done. Oh. All right, so now that the brine tank is refilled with water, you can kind of see how really nasty that is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it again with the shop vac. All right, so um, pretty clean now. I mean, I've got all the residue out of there now. Let me take a look in here, see what we got going on. Now we're good. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, refill this uh, with fresh salt. Okay, so I'm using regular human salt. Um, there's all these different varieties you can buy with all these different chemicals and different treatments. Um, the treatment that I'm going to use here kind of replaces all of that extra stuff that you buy in each bag that makes it a lot more expensive. I just treat this every so often. Also, you want to put the well back where you want it because you're going to put 80 pounds of salt into this or if you put three bags, you don't need any more than two to three bags. And then you put water back and it's going to get really heavy. <laughs> it's going to get really heavy, so we're going to put it back now. Mm -hmm. Tastes like salt. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to put the water hose, whoa, I'm going to put the water hose back in there and we're going to add water. And the goal is, is we want the salt to be partially submerged. We're not going to fill it all the way up. That'd be insane. We're just going to put enough water that there's a few inches of water over top of the salt. Slushy time, slushy time. I don't know why, but I feel like having a margarita right about now. Oh man, what is that? I just cleaned it. And it came off my water hose. All right, so that's about as much as we need. All right, so um, there's a piece of black something in there I'm gonna have to fish out. It's a little milky right now, but I'll give it a couple hours, it'll actually uh, settle back down and be just like clear white water with black, pure white crystals in the bottom. I'll try to get you guys a photo a little bit later on. But now what I'm gonna do is make a mixture of the cleaning chemicals uh, so that we can add to the brine. Okay, so according to the directions, two quarts of water. Uh, it's about how many quarts it takes to make Kool-Aid. And uh, we're going to add some of this cleaner to it. We're going to pre-dilute it. And uh, two cups into two quarts of water. Good measuring cup. So we're going to add that in. And uh, caution, keep out of the reach of children. You can't touch this. Contain citric acid. Avoid skin and eye contact. Great, I was going to stir it with my hand. I guess I can't do that. Let me find something to stir with. Stir. Yeah. What is stung in it? I don't know, it's a piece of plastic. I hope it's not important. So we're gonna go ahead and stir and dilute that. That smells like really bad. And the instructions say that we're adding that to the brine well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna regen our water softener like normal tonight, and that will actually clean out all the impurities from the resin tank. What is this? So at this point, everything with the brine well is complete. We've uh, cleared out the sediment, vacuumed it out, rinsed it out, got it clean, added fresh salt, put in a solution to clean out the resin tank. So we're gonna go ahead and cap out the brine well. 
Now we're gonna focus on the maintenance portion on the actual resin tank. All right, so every water softener is gonna be different. Um, basically, we need to put this guy into bypass mode. And uh, for my particular model, bypass mode is where they point at each other, like this. Like, hey, we're friends. So now water is not gonna flow through here. That valve, that Volteri or whatever with the three bad guys that made it, valve is located here. Twist this bad boy off here, and it's under pressure, so it's gonna leak water. Great. Just a little bit. Hope it doesn't gush everywhere and ruin my camera. There we go. Ah! There we go. Just peeing all over the floor. All right, so we got that off. This is that valve I was telling you about. And all I'm looking for is to make sure that it's not gummed up with any kind of residue or any kind of sediment. So it looks like we're pretty clear in here. Now yours might have a, a mesh, like a net. Mine actually has this uh, strainer here. Um, but since I don't have any sediment living in here and this area is pretty clear, I can go ahead and put them back on and uh, we're in pretty good shape. And if you happen to have a screen in there and it's gummed up with any uh, sediment or residue, uh, you definitely want to clean that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back on and tighten him up He-Man tight like it was before so it doesn't leak everywhere. All right, so like I promised, pretty basic. Uh, cleaning out the sediment tank, making sure there's no debris up in there, adding some cleaning solution. Next up, we're gonna hit regen. Uh, you basically wanna regen your cycle. Mine is actually set to regen every like thousand gallons or so. Um, I've got 700 gallons according to this, but that's regening off the sediment I used to have. So I'm gonna tell it to regen. That's gonna use the fresh brine that I just made in the clean tank. It's gonna pull the solution through the resin beads and it's gonna clean those out overnight tonight. So tomorrow, we're gonna have some really good soft water. You wanna do this about once a year or so. Clean out the sediment at the bottom. And again, you don't wanna add a lot of salt at once and just keep filling it all the way to the top because you're gonna get bridging at the bottom and you're gonna get a lot more sediment at the bottom. So your goal is, is to let it pretty much go almost all the way to nothing before you add more salt. Good luck.